Hello and welcome to Electric Focus and today we're going to talk about charging at home just using the cable that comes with the car with a three pin plug. So let's get straight into the video. So when you get an electric car you normally get a cable that comes with it that at least allows you to plug in the car to a normal socket in your home. So if you've got space off-road parking, space to park your car near to your house, then at least you know you can get a charge even if you haven't had a wall box fitted. And it's also very good for emergencies. So all we need to do is you plug the type two end of the cable into your car, and then you plug the other end, the three pin plug into a socket. Now, a couple of things to be aware of there. First of all, make sure the socket is in good condition. If you're in doubt, get an electrician out to have a look at it and make sure it's suitable. The second thing is you mustn't use a normal domestic extension cable. In fact, you'll find that your manufacturer of the car will say that you must not use an extension cable at all. So I can only advise you never to use one. I have seen that there are online some companies are saying that they can provide a specialist cable that's thick enough to be able to use an extension cable for an electric car. But I really don't know whether that invalidates your warranty. So my recommendation is just to not use one and just use the cable itself straight plugged into the electricity. There's another reason it might be good to get an electrician out just to check your electrics is that I've not had this at home myself because I don't do a lot of charging at home anyway. So I, only time I've tested it, um, I've not had any problems with the electricity tripping, but I did have this issue when I was on holiday, when I was using a three pin plug method there to charge, it kept tri tripping the electric. So I'd certainly suggest you get an electrician out to check your electric before your car comes. Now that is one of the benefits of having a wall box in that it has something called load balancing what that does is protect your fuse from overloading so therefore it shouldn't have that problem of tripping so it's certainly worth looking at a wall box but we're just talking today about using the three pin plug method when you finish charging you can either take it out and just put it inside somewhere or i'd recommend that you put it back in your boot because it's always there in an emergency so if you're out and about and you really needed to charge and there's no charges anywhere then at least you know worst case scenario is you could plug it into somebody's socket to get yourself a bit of charge so it's good to store it in your car so what about the time it's going to take you to fully charge your car from 0 to 100 percent well one of the downsides of using this method is it does take a long time because you're looking at speeds of between five and maximum really eight miles an hour so that's the speed you can expect, but then what about the time it takes to charge? Well, that depends on your battery size. So let's take two extremes. I have the Jaguar I-Pace, which is a 90 kilowatt hour battery or 84.7 usable because there's a buffer on each end to protect the battery. So 84.7 usable, that takes me, if it charges at five miles an hour, that would take 43 and a half hours to charge from naught to 100%, so nearly two days to fully charge. And then if you go to the other end of the scale, something like a mini electric, which has a 28.9 kilowatt hour usable battery, very short range as well, by the way, 115 miles or something. And if you were to charge that fully from naught to 100%, then that would take around 15 hours. So a lot quicker because it's a smaller battery. Let's just finish off with talking about the benefits and then the negatives of just using this method to charge your car at home. Well, clearly the main benefit is that you haven't got to pay out for wall box. Wall boxes will cost you for an installation, including the wall box, at least a thousand pounds, maybe more if it's more complex. So you're certainly saving quite a chunk of money there, but there are lots of advantages that come with wall boxes, which we won't talk about today, but that is a big benefit, uh, not having to pay that out. It's also always there for an emergency, but you kind of got it always there for an emergency, whether you've got a wall box or not, but it's certainly handy to have it. And as I said earlier, keep it in your car just in case you need it. Now, the negatives of it clearly are that it takes a long time to charge a car. 
there's also an impact on your cost of charging because if you've got a wall box and you can charge much quicker in a shorter space of time so for example i can charge a rate of around 17 to 20 miles an hour with the jaguar i-pace so that means in the four hour off peak period that i get as much cheaper i'm paying seven and a half pence at the moment for those four hours i can charge nearly 80 miles of range in that time so that's a big benefit compared to using a three pin plug for me because i'm only going to get about 20 miles in that four hours if i was using the three pin plug so there are some other benefits there of course the other one i mentioned was that you've not got any load balancing so it could be that your electric is tripped from time to time if you've got lots of things running at the same time and you're charging a car. And of course, there's the overall time it takes. I mean, in my case, it would take me nearly two days to charge my car up from 0 to 100%. So that's a negative too. So it's certainly worth looking at the positives of having a wall box, which I'll cover in another video. So that's it for today. I hope it was useful. I hope that covers all the things you need to know about charging at home on a three pin plug. Thank you for watching as always. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll speak to you soon.